There's something right, she hasn't jumped yet. Go ahead. We'll track down Mr. Grange. I sent the car to bring him to the station and DC Walker is going to speak to him, over. Thanks, Smithy. Mr. Grange, this is DC Walker. Yeah, so, uh, what's this all about? I was working on a case earlier today involving your ex-wife. She seemed agitated. What's she done? Mr. Grange, we've got a current serious situation. She's on top of a building and threatening to jump off. Oh, my God. It's a multi-storey car park on Harville Road. Oh. That's where our daughter died. I'm sorry, I, I didn't... No. It's the anniversary today. Sarah thought that I blamed her, but I didn't. But she pushed us all away. She wouldn't even go near our son. You have another child? Yeah, Joseph. Maybe if Sarah saw Joseph, it might make her change her mind. Joseph had fallen asleep, so I put him in his car seat. I remember just feeling grateful that one of her were asleep. Emily were helping me put the shopping in the boot. And Joseph started crying. I only left her for a couple of seconds. When I went back to the boot, she wasn't there. She'd managed to squeeze herself through the railings. I was begging her to come back, but she just thought I were again. When I watched her tiny little body tumbling through the air, I remember thinking, that can't be my Emily. It can't be. Oh, you were right what you said before, you know. Everyone has to take responsibility for their action. Oh, please, Sarah, that's not what I meant. Oh, I had everything. I had an husband who loved me. Two adorable kids. What have I got now? An ex-husband who can never forgive me. An empty house and microwave dinners. You have to keep going. Sarah, it just takes time. There are people who can help, professionals. Did you know? I've seen a counsellor. I was involved in an incident. And at first, I couldn't cope. Panic attacks, flashbacks. They said I was suffering from post-traumatic stress. And it worked for you? Sarah, I know our situations don't compare. They, they can't compare. But there's no reason why things can't work out for you. You just have to give it time. I've had a bereavement counselling. There's no point. I want Emily back in the car. I do that, Governor. She's taken it. She called by a couple of hours ago. She told them that I said it was all right. Don't worry. I'm sure she's OK. Look, if she's up on that ledge, then what's happened to my boy, eh? Where's Joseph? You've still got something to hold on for. You've got your little son, Joseph. It's OK. I've already said goodbye. He doesn't need me now. How do you mean? I picked him up from nursery. I told him that I loved him and I've told him everything's going to be all right. Sarah, what's happened to Joseph? Sarah, please, where's Joseph? He's at my mum's. I wanted him to be with family when he heard the news. Did you tell his father that you've taken him? No, I didn't think. Where does your mother live? Glanville Street, number 32. Sarah, can I just tell my colleague so that she can let Martin know that Joseph's safe? Sarge. Sarah's taken her little son Joseph out of nursery. She's taken him to her mother's... 32 Glanville Street. Great, I'll get that checked out. Um, Lee, can you, uh, can you send somebody down there? Sure, Sash. Right, everything seems to be under control on the ground here, Mum, so um, I'll go up in case Roger needs me. What little boy can do without his mum? What grown man, for that matter? Nobody can replace a mother. Imagine what this will do to him if he finds out that this is the place where both his sister and his mother died. So I know how scared you are, but you've got to see that you still have someone to live for. How do you think Joseph will feel? What do you mean? As he grows up, he's going to think that you never loved him. He's going to think that he wasn't enough for you to live for. Now, you owe it to Joseph to give it another go. I'll get another counsellor for you, somebody who can make a connection with you. But you've got to give it another chance. Sarah? Sarah, what have you got to lose?
but it works for you. It made you better. Yes, it worked for me. I promise. Sarah's son, Joseph? He's fine. Tony checked in at Sarah's mother's and the ex-husband's there now. We should be really proud of what we did up there. I'm not sure what I've done will change anything, Sarge. Maybe not. At least it's brought us some time. For what it's worth. Have you finished being Spider-Man? Mom, I know I shouldn't have gone on the ledge. I take full responsibility. Well, I suggest you get back to the station and take some well-earned refs. We'll talk about this later in my office. Mm. Now, I'd better give the press a statement. I'm sure they'll be pleased. They had a very happy ending. Hey, Rog. Nice one. Come on, pick up. Pick up. Hi, this is Kristen. I can't hear Kristen Shaw's accountant, Damien Nash, has just confirmed your version of events. Excellent, so I'm in the clear. Not quite. He's an associate of Kristen Shaw, not what you call an impartial witness. The DPS are treating it with caution. Well, where does that leave me? They want to speak to Louis Drake again and get our information. And in the meantime? In the meantime, you're confined to the station. Been a bit of an eventful day, hasn't it, PC Valentine? Oh. Between ignoring the advice of a senior officer and talking down a suicidal woman, put me in a very difficult position. But what were you thinking of going out on that ledge? So she had dropped anything could have happened. I wanted to connect with her. I had to get out there. It was the only way. You're a very good copper. And what you did today shows real skill. But I am concerned that you're losing perspective. And you've been quite on edge lately. And given your recent history, I think we should closely monitor the situation. Whatever you think best, Mom. And get yourself off home. Put your feet up. And get yourself an early night, yeah? Well done, Andrew. What about you, Tony? Fancy drink? No, I've got David a pair of marigolds tonight. Oh. See you tomorrow. Fantastic result, Roger. Well done. Yeah, nice one, Roger. Do you fancy a drink to celebrate? Roger! Have you seen a deer? Hello, Sunhill CID. How can I help you? We've just had word from St. Hughes. Apparently, Louis Drake has withdrawn his statement. I don't understand. He claims he was assaulted by a gang of youths. So why did he accuse me? Because you were cracking jokes at his expense. Because you humiliated him. 